Where I am standing used to be the heart of what was, at the time, the largest and fastest growing privately owned roleplay community within Second Life. And in the space of less than four months, it's basically closing down. Welcome to the rise and fall of New Haven. So I first heard of New Haven uh, around about the same time that I decided to move into a place called Cedar Creek because at the time Cedar Creek was essentially the largest privately owned role play regions or set of role play uh, role play regions within Second Life and the seven what was it even seven I think it was only four or five months that I spent in uh, that I spent in Cedar Creek kind of left me with a slightly bitter taste with the way that privately owned role play estate groups, uh, at least in the modern contemporary contemporary scene, was ran. And it wasn't until roughly midway through last year that I decided to give New Haven a try. And at that point in time, New Haven was nowhere near the 27 region behemoth that it eventually turned into at the end of 2023, beginning of 2024. But the foundation was already laid down and a lot of people around the modern contemporary role play community scene looked at New Haven as the star. It was the gem in the roleplay movement to do with roleplay regions within Second Life, and more especially roleplay regions that were to do with the contemporary modern-day living. Sure, at that time, there were much, much bigger, um, older roleplay regions like New Babbage, which at that point in time had 16 regions, or Caledon, which at that point in time had just over 20 regions, but those places were mainly all about the Victorian age. When it came to modern day living, New Haven and Cedar Creek was the be all and end all of everything that was to do with modern day role play. So, as the months progressed on through 2023, New Haven grew more and more and more. There was talk of a four region wide national park being attached on to New Haven at the south. People wouldn't be able to rent there, it would simply be a four-region park. This is the kind of draw that New Haven was having. It was also the kind of money that New Haven was taking in from the renters of at, the, of the, at that point in time, just over 20 regions as we were moving in to the new year of 2023 going into 2024. It wasn't until roughly January of this year, of 2024, that the first cracks had started to appear. The way that New Haven was set up, Brian Lake was the boss, you could say. He was the man that was basically providing what was essentially the funding for New Haven. He was the man that was basically opening up the bank account to let New Haven continue to grow and to let New Haven continue to prosper. The landscaping, however, was not done by Brian. The landscaping was done by Cara Oliveri, who's now running the Portofino set of roleplay role regions currently in Second Life. But Cara, at that point in time, was the major landscaper. Anything to do with the trees, anything to do with the plants, in fact, anything to do with house placement and road layout. It was basically Cara that was doing everything. At the beginning of January of this year, and some of this stemmed from December of 2023 as well, but mostly the beginning of January of 2024, Cara vanished. She disappeared from Discord, she disappeared from the groups, she was nowhere to be seen. She didn't make any posts at all on Facebook, she just simply upped and left. People in New Haven were wondering what was actually going on with Cara. Why did Cara decide to up sticks and leave? However, within the space of about three and a half to four weeks, going into the very beginning of February of this year, Cara reappeared. And she seemed happy enough. It was like nothing had happened. So things trundled on as normal. The planned 
four region park was scaled back to two regions and a lot of us thought well you know four regions was a bit on the big side considering they're not going to be getting any rent back from those so we were all happy with that and life continued as normal in New Haven and then March happened sometime through March don't quite know the exact date because I've lost my notes because I'm an idiot but sometime midway through March Cara left again and this time the feeling was a little bit different than the last time that she left. What started to happen was basically all-out abject panic. Brian Lake, the owner of the regions at that point in time, the owner of the 27 regions, because that was the, that was the furthest that New Haven had managed to grow, 27 regions, Brian Lake panicked and a notice was sent out, not only attacking Cara, but basically sending the rest of the populace of New Haven into an abject panic as well. Threats of items possibly being returned, threats of houses disappearing, threats of landscaping disappearing, and to give the New Haven, or at least some of the New Haven residents, credit where credit is due, a lot of these residents, like Morrigan Zabellan, like Skoll and like other people, decided to essentially try and rebuild New Haven. The following two months, March and April, was filled with rumours. It was filled with he said, she said stories that were continuously going on back and forth between the camp that supported Brian and the camp that supported Cara. By the time the end of April rolled around and we were going into the beginning of May, more and more and more cracks had started to form along the surface of New Haven. And I first started to notice these cracks as head of marketing. Brian the owner of New Haven had decided to basically shuck most of his responsibilities and outright ignore anything to do with direct marketing questions and outright ignore anything to do with what the landscapers, this is the new landscapers, were trying to achieve with the redo of what was going to become New Haven 2.0. This was the grand big headline that Brian was pushing for the return of New Haven and the removal of all of Cara Oliveri's landscaping. But it didn't quite turn out that way. By the time the beginning of spring rolled around, Cara had had enough. Linden Lab appeared and essentially gutted all the 27 regions of New Haven. All the trees, all the roads, all the landscaping, Half of the houses suddenly vanished because at that point in time, Cara was getting fed up with Brian and several other people dragging their feet to do with the replacement of Cara's landscaping. That was when the downward spiral started to begin. Once again, Brian decided to attack Cara. But as Brian was beginning to attack Cara, chat logs were released where Cara Oliveri had essentially warned Brian Lake's staff that the return was going to happen days before Linden Lab showed up and gutted all the regions. This actually meant that, factually speaking, Brian Lake had already been given warning that all of this was about to happen within roughly a week and a half to two weeks. He was given ample time to get with the new landscaping team to have a talk with the new landscaping team and come up with a plan for the redo of New Haven to turn it into New Haven 2.0. However, as Astrid Gray and several other people, namely Kat as well, posted in the New Haven Discord, these meetings never took place. And for days on end, Brian Lake basically vanished into thin air. And the brand new landscaping team with Astrid, with Kat and with several other people were basically left sitting there wondering what does Brian want this place to look like? Because Brian was non-committal. And this was a running theme with Brian Lake all the way through what happened with Cara Oliveri, all the way through what happened with the mass return of what was the 27 regions of New Haven, all the way through the panic that ensued. Brian Lake is essentially non-communicative. He vanishes when things start to not go his way. Things took an even worse turn for the worse 
Okay, that phrasing didn't make any sense. Sorry, not enough copy. But things took a bigger turn for the worse when the three girls in SL got involved. Yes, Fenella Bailey, Leandra Aries and Lisa Blackwood, who were running at that point in time, an SML-based gym, who were waiting for about five to six days for Brian Lake to give the go-ahead for a larger replacement warehouse building that would drop perfectly on the three parcels that they were already renting. For six days, they waited, and they gave up and quit. Now, there are some people out there that point to the eventual closure of New Haven and lay the blame directly on the three girls in SL's shoulders, considering that their blog is one of the most highest traffic blogs in Second Life. But the thing about the three girls in SL blog is the majority of people that read that blog aren't even in Second Life. The reason their blog gets so many visits is because it's part of a wider independent gaming journalist blog network outside of Second Life. This is why the original blog post to do with Brian Lake and the downfall of what would become the downfall of New Haven was getting 7,000, 8,000, 10,000, 11,000 page views, all within the space of a couple of weeks. Truth be told, practically every single post that's on the Three Girls in SL website gets between 5,000 to 6,000 views on average. It just so happened that the New Haven posts sparked a bit more interest. And it wasn't just with the Three Girls in SL. By the time I had left New Haven midway through May because I seen what way the ship was turning. It was heading straight into an iceberg and nobody there was there to slow it down. But by the time I seen what way the ship was turning and left New Haven, there were already posts that were showing up on Reddit, posts that were showing up on the official Second Life forum, posts that were showing up on other larger, well, you could call them larger blogs, to do with the Second Life populace. And all of this was to do with fraud. Pure out, unadulterated fraud. Because numbers and a growing number of residents of New Haven were demanding refunds and Brian was either giving half of the refund and then refusing to give the other half because he was unhappy with the way that that former renter was speaking to him or he just outright ignored that renter. And when you start committing fraud on a grand scale to between 15 to 25 residents, it's not just one single blog that starts to speak up against you. And, and one now, I, these, are, these are unverified numbers, but the person that told me them is kind of in the know. At one point in time on the official Second Life forum, there was 14 individual threads crying out for Linden Lab to ban Brian Lake that were deleted from the official Linden Lab forum. And those posts appeared all within the space of three days. By that point in time, Linden Lab themselves must have known something was up because a number of former residents had, al had already publicly stated that they had decided to abuse report Brian Lake for fraud as well. Now, at the same time all this was going on, the same team who was doing the landscaping were trying to landscape to the best of their abilities without actually knowing what was actually going on. For instance, where I'm standing right now, this large empty piece of land, which is in one of the core heartland regions in the centre of what was the 27, region, uh, 27 regions of New Haven, this place has been sitting empty since the original return in May. Empty. All of this land. Nothing on it. Because at that point in time, the landscapers were much more interested in trying to get some kind of landscaping going for the houses that were already up for rent. But a number of things started to work against New Haven. At the time of just before me leaving the marketing job, actually, 
at the time all this was happening, when the landscapers were trying to get the landscaping done, when vast swathes of the old core regions of New Haven were sitting empty, the growing number of anti-New Haven posts that were showing up on Reddit and on the official SL forum, including the blog posts that were made by Three Girls in SL, had eventually made New Haven persona non grata. When it, when it came to people outside of New Haven essentially saying, hey, I've got an idea. If you're wanting to move into a, a contemporary roleplay place, I know just the place, New Haven. Trouble is, by that point in time, New Haven looked like it had been nuked. Everyone looked at New Haven with landscaping missing, with buildings missing, with all with some of the replacement buildings floating two metres off the ground, with chunks of the road network still unusable, and they decided to take a step back and to see what happened. And this is when attrition and entropy starts to take hold. Because if you don't get the two basics, and I mean the basics of roleplay communities fixed as quick as possible, you're never going to recover. Number one, if a roleplay player is going to spend two lindens per prim, premium, we're talking premium rentals here, to rent a house, they're going to want two things. Number one, a house and landscaping that actually looks good, and number two, a community that looks good. And in both these cases, for the last three months of New Haven's life, large swathes of New Haven were basically untouched. And to, to make matters even worse, Brian Lake decided to start shedding regions. From 27 regions, it was knocked down to 16. From 16 regions, it was knocked down to 12. And all the while, Brian Lake was still ignoring the group of people that was put together to try and landscape New Haven into New Haven 2.0. And still, Brian Lake decided to continue to harass and annoy the Charlie's Angels slash Three Girls in SL by the numerous profile pics that he popped up. And he wondered why the attacks from the Three Girls in SL got more and more fierce. So where does this leave us? Well, if I pull this camera up, what you're looking at is essentially all that's left of New Haven from 27 regions. 27 regions. A planned four-region sized national park. We are now down to basically the last six regions of New Haven. I've been sitting here, or standing here in this large empty chunk of land for the better part of 17, 20 minutes recording this video and not one single person has appeared. Why? Because this is all that's left of New Haven. By the time the middle of August shows up, these final regions will also be disappearing. So what can be learned from what happened with New Haven? When it comes to the downfall of any type of roleplay community, a singular blame cannot be tacked on to a singular reason that makes a 27 region large roleplay community fall apart. Was it completely and totally Cara Oliveri's fault for getting Linden Lab in to return stuff that rightfully belonged to hers which caused New Haven to collapse? No because other communities has had that happen to them and they're still here to this day. Was it the fault of bloggers like the Three Girls in SL? Was it the fault of posters on the SL forum? Was it the fault of posters on Reddit for attacking Brian Lake and accusing him of fraud? No, because that kind of thing goes on with communities left, right and centre since the beginning of Second Life. Was it the fault of Brian Lake being basically a missing landowner who was not giving his new team of landscapers enough direction to give them the impetus to go on. Not really, because again, there is other roleplay places out there that have had no clear direction of landscaping from their landowner for months on end. They're still around. Is it because of a combination of all three of these things? Yes, it is. The fact 
that New Haven is basically closing down, or is basically in the process, sorry, of closing down as a warning to other roleplay communities out there. It's a warning not just to the roleplay owner to always keep on good terms with your landscaping team. It's not only a warning to that roleplay community owner to also keep on good terms with any bloggers that may be staying in your set of regions. It's also not just a warning to the land to the to the land owner to always make sure that your residents that are living in your regions that are paying you their hard-earned London dollars are kept up to date with everything that happens. It's also a warning to the general populace that are moving in to these large roleplay areas. You've got to make sure that the foundation that that roleplay community is sitting on is a known one. And when I say known, I mean there's no secrets going on. The original disappearance of Cara Oliveri at the end of 2023 beginning of 2024, set little alarm bells going off in my head. Alarm bells that the owner of New Haven, Brian Lake, didn't seem to hear. When you're relying on, a, on an external team of landscapers, if that external team of landscapers is not being heard by the landowner, then that external team of landscapers is going to get pissed off and eventually leave. It's happened with Cara, it's happened with New Haven, and it's happened with numerous other roleplay communities that are currently in Second Life. The lesson that can be learned from the downfall of New Haven, which basically lasted for the better part of four months, is this kind of downfall can basically happen to any other community, roleplay or otherwise within Second Life. It only takes one spark that basically starts off a fire that no landowner and no moderator and no marketer will ever be able to put out. Lessons have been learned from the downfall of New Haven. Um, in fact, Magnolia City, coming to think of it, which is the place I'm doing marketing for, Magnolia City learned immediately about how to treat, how to treat landscapers and how to make sure that landscaper is always happy. And more importantly, have that landscaper log in to a neutral account where all of the landscaping items is on that neutral account and is not on that landscaper's personal account. And to be honest, I've heard a lot more roleplay communities have started to do that as well, mostly because of what happened with New Haven. Yes, New Haven is now gone. The regions that are still up, the six that are left, will be slowly vanishing over the course of the next seven or eight days. And by the time you're watching this at the end of August, the only thing that will be left of New Haven is the ghostly impression left on the world map, which will itself vanish within the next three or four months. New Haven by this time next year, will probably be long forgotten in the annals of Second Life history. But for the people who do take part in contemporary roleplay, who have lived within the 27 regions that make New Haven up and were there during New Haven's golden age, New Haven is gone, but it will never be forgotten. <laughs>